What's up Sim Racers? This is Larry TJR Sim here and today I'm going to go over some Sim Commander 4 settings uh, with you. I want to break them down into some bite-sized chunks for you to go back and refer to. Uh, of course this is more catered to people that are new to Sim Commander 4 for their AccuForce wheel. Um, so I just wanted to help out and, and give you some bite-sized uh, information that uh, may help you uh, get more out of your wheel. So it will be tabbed in, in in the description. Each video will probably take, you know, five to 10 minute range. And uh, so I may have to break them up into separate videos so I don't have just a really long video. Uh, but uh, if I do include a couple of them in it, it'll be tabbed uh, in the description to where you can just click to each one. Uh, later on, if you forget how to do something, you can refer back to it. So. With that said, let's get started uh, with it. I have, of course, Sim Commander up here, and I will load up the control panel. Uh, in the control panel, you're going to want to go over here to Settings, and then you will see Sim Device Manager. And with Sim Device Manager, this is where you get your setting. Well, actually, let's go down here where it says AccuForce Steering System. Let me blow this up here. And key for steering system here. So this is the settings you get uh, that will save directly to your wheelbase itself. And uh, once you set it here, you set it and forget about it and move on. However, if you are experiencing some uh, bad oscillations or, or really spiky bumps and stuff in games that don't support Sim Commander 4, this is where you're going to want to go back uh, and make some adjustments, save it to your wheelbase again. And go play that game now remember you can't save multiple profiles this way so um, but this is okay because there's only a couple games that don't uh, support the sim commander software but uh, let's say if you play wreck fest right and you may want a certain setting but then you go to forza horizon 4 and you're gonna want a different setting so you're gonna have to do a little middle uh, middle note to yourself that you may have to go back and change it for wreck fest so to speak uh, and then forza horizon 4 so Anyway, let's get into what these settings do for you. Uh, enough blabbering. So, the mode. The mode's important here. Now, this is, translates over to Sim Commander 4 software itself. It's the same thing you see there. You have recruit, soft default, high responsive. Uh, responsive peaks allowed. Ignore the last one. It's obsolete. Uh, what this does, all this does is it takes your how fast your wheel moves back and forth is all these settings do. It has nothing to do with how much force it puts out. It's how fast they react to bumps. So you hit some curbing and you want it to react really fast over curbing, over small bumps and stuff. Uh, that is, you would put it up on like say responsive, right? Each level you go up, the more responsive it becomes. Each level you go down, the slower it reacts to uh, bumps and curbs and dips and all that stuff in the track. Uh, so you can see like recruit would be used for maybe your, your small children or, or someone that's not used to uh, forces that they would obtain out of a higher end wheel uh, like the AccuForce. But uh, I, I, I've tried it, but it's, it's nothing. Uh, you, don't, you, you wouldn't use it, okay, for, for the audience I'm talking to. Uh, the ones you would probably use mostly is default, high responsive, and actually soft through responsive is what you'd probably use. I recommend default because that has a more of a natural feeling of, of what you can relate to in real life driving a car of how it reacts to potholes or, or, or cracks in the pavement and stuff, how quick your real steering wheel reacts to it. Uh, default seems to be more of a natural feeling, a, a natural translation to us as sim racers. Uh, but high, of course, it amplifies it to where it's going to react quicker, responsive, even faster. Responsive is a little bit too jittery for me. Uh, some games say like uh, instead of Corsa, uh, it reacts pretty violently over bumps as it is in the game and it doesn't have a very rubbery feeling to the tires going over these uh, these these peaks and valleys uh, for curbing and stuff. So uh, responsive is not one I would use in say that instance, right? I would bump it down to a default. And, uh, and then I would still add some smoothing within the game to make it even better. So, but that's an explanation of what these settings do. Uh, everybody's different, everybody likes something different. So 
you know adjust to your liking but I do recommend you try them out because I know when you come from uh, belt driven wheels we tend to turn up force feedback to get a nice heavier steering and feel those strong jolts when we hit them but we tend to lose the detail well this one has nothing to do with how much strength it is this is all about the details uh, your intensity slider is going to have much strength that you have in the wheel so uh, hopefully that explains that part of it so anyway I recommend default and uh, run with that now going down this list here intensity uh, I leave it at 100% all the time, save it to the wheel. Of course, I use Sim Commander 4 all the time, but games like Forza Horizon 4, I'll adjust the force feedback setting within the game itself. Uh, very seldomly, or I have not experienced a game that has so much force feedback on a low level in game that I had to come back to Sim Commander software and turn it down because it was too forceful. Just haven't ran across that, but it's possible. And that's what you would adjust. Smoothing, smoothing is one that you would probably come back and adjust uh, for games like uh, Forza Horizon 4 or Wreckfest or something like that, uh, to where you have you know these peaks that come up and down, and then come up and down, right, uh, going over bumps and stuff. The higher smoothing will kind of knock those points down a little bit to where it you know you you feel the bump, right, and your tires compress. And going up over that bump but it's not a sharp drop off down on the other end it's more of a smoother drop off on the end so that's kind of how to explain smoothing to you um, so when you get that spiky undulation in curbs and stuff and it's rattling your wheel a lot it doesn't feel very natural it just feels like spikiness uh, smoothing is your friend that's the one that's gonna smooth out those bumps you're still gonna feel the bumps uh, there's just going to be smoother feeling. It's going to, instead of you, your tires feeling like wood going over these bumps, they're just going to feel like tires, rubber going over these bumps to where they compress on the bump and then spring back, right? Uh, so smooth is your friend there. That's one you're going to uh, want to adjust in this software uh, for games that don't support Sim Commander 4. Obviously, it's the same settings work with Sim Commander 4 settings. So you will see these same explanations carry over as well. So degrees of rotation, pretty easy, 900 degrees. I think everybody's used to that. Uh, stop spring, I already explained that in other videos, but it's just, you know, where your, your uh, spring force that you stop against. Uh, a stop dampener is, is the dampening uh, of that spring. Uh, and then of course your spring is, is, is spring. It's, you know, how fast it goes back to center, right? Uh, I generally leave all these, as you see here, set uh, to default dampener. And na dampener tends to take out a lot of force feedback effects, but it will give you a little bit of rubbery feel at times. But I generally uh, leave this at zero uh, because I have an experience where I needed to use it for games that don't support Sim Commander 4. Inertia, that's one that's uh, good. Once in motion, it stays in motion kind of thing. Uh, you could use this one if you're getting a little bit of travel on, on, a, on straightaways, let's say, with your wheel, and it's starting to turn back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, forth. Not oscillation, really, not fast, but slow. You can turn up inertia a little bit and, um, and, and slow that down. Actually, also, friction's the same way. Friction, you know, from zero to... Well, really around, I think they say the Sim Commander uh, settings say like around 1.5% uh, to 3% is kind of what's natural as far as what you feel in, in I guess, the steering rack of your car. Um, so that can actually do the same thing as inertia as far as slow those oscillations. And that's usually my first go-by is if I've already turned up... Um, oscillation strength say in sim commander 4 software uh, and it hasn't fixed that slow movement going down the straights i'll come and turn friction up and it usually takes it all away so but anyway that is the settings uh that will save of course to your wheelbase itself and um we'll go on to the next section be sure to hit save settings to controller uh that way they save and you're not chasing your tail later on wondering why something did didn't do something right so anyway, let's go on to the next video and uh, uh, hopefully explain more for you along the way. All right. Thanks.